Welcome to Victory Quilts. I'm Eleanor Burns. Today I'm going to show you two blocks, the Silent Star and Comfort Quilt. Our story begins in 1933 when Adolf Hitler was head of the Nazi party. He had already taken Austria, Czechoslovakia, and Poland. Well, after Hitler ignored warnings to withdraw his troops, Great Britain and France declared war on Germany officially starting World War II. You know, America was determined to stay out of the fighting. They would remain silent. The Kansas City Star printed this pattern, Silent Star, in 1940. It's a beautiful pattern. It's similar to an Ohio Star with triangle piece squares in the corners. Now these are 12 inch blocks. They're set together with lattice from the background fabric. And then we frame the quilt with a ribbon border. And that blue check just adds a charming touch. I love it. Franklin D. Roosevelt worked out the Land Lease Act with Prime Minister Winston Churchill. So we could send Churchill weapons, food, oil, and equipment, but we would still remain silent. You know, Europe was devastated and families had to live without heat and blown out windows. Quilters are so generous, they just rose to the occasion. Church groups organized quilting bees and were able to send thousands of quilts to Europe through the United Nations, Red Cross, the Lutheran Church, the Mormon and Mennonite services, just to name a few. Heavy wool quilts were often made from salesmen, fabric samples and joined together with embroidery stitches. Beautiful and heavy. Well, once again, the Kansas City Star printed a quick block, the comfort quilt. Now that can be made easily from scraps. My 2007 block party students each made a block and contributed it to this comfort quilt. The blocks are set on point with lattice and fussy cut cornerstones. You know, the block is just made simply of strips, squares, and rectangles. It's easy. Well, these are two great blocks with a story to tell. Let's get sewing. The Silent Star pattern was printed by the Kansas City Star in 1940. It was April 10th, 1940. It was submitted by the reader that was Para Lee Hogue from Arkansas. Now, we will never know if it was meant to be a political message put out by the Kansas City Star, but we do know that Churchill was relieved when Roosevelt was reelected in 1940. Well, Para Lee had an idea for her silent star. She said, okay, you just use all of these triangles here. Well, I have a better way and I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, this is the silent star. We have two different techniques in this block. First of all, we have four half square triangles for the corners. Half squares put together to make one. And then in the very center, we have all quarter squares. Actually, each square is divided into four triangles. Now, this is the 12 inch finish block. So think about this, a little math here, see if you can keep with me. So the finish size of this block right here will be four inches so that you can just go four, eight, 12. Yes, that works. And then on the six inch block, it's exactly the same, smaller of course, these finished squares are two inches so that you can go two, four, six. Oh, it all makes sense. Well, I'm going to start with the half square triangles in the corners with the background and the green. And this is really easy. This is one that I already showed you on Mr. Roosevelt's necktie. This is a piece of background that is five inches by ten inches so that we can get all four corners right out of one piece. You want to take your ruler and divide it right down through the middle. So if it's five by ten, we have to mark at five inches. I like to use a square up like this because once I draw the squaring line right down through the middle, then you can just turn it and just go up and down 
And those diagonal lines are your stitching lines. Oh, we are moving along. Get everything out of the way. How about some pins? Oh, forget pins half the time, but they do help hold your fabric together. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and use that quarter of an inch foot. I do have a red thread on my machine just so you can see the stitching, but you are going to want to use a coordinating fabric. I put my bar right on the line. I'm just going to get right up here to the center line. And at that point, you just pivot, turn, and head down the other side. You know, I always tell you to use a quarter of an inch seam, but I do have to tell you, I think I'm about one thread less than a quarter of an inch. And I do one thread less just to compensate for the fold. You know, every time you open, you press, you do all that folding, you lose just a little bit. And I mean it, it is just one thread less. When I turn on my machine, it, it comes on at 3.5. Well, I move my needle one thread to the right so that it's 4.0. And that's it. That's all the sewing that we have to do here. Cut your threads. So I've sewed a quarter of an inch on both sides of the diagonal line. And all I have to do now is just cut on those lines. And you can just reverse the procedure. You can go ahead and take the square. You did it right in the middle. How about just cutting right in half? And then turn your ruler, put it back on those lines. And so you can save some time by just cutting up and down. And you've got all four corner pieces going. That's pretty magical, isn't it? Well, these are supposed to be squared up to four and a half inches. So I'm going to use my triangle square up ruler, find the four and a half inch red dotted line and place it right on the four and a half inch stitched line. And there's just a tiny little bit. There's an excess of maybe an eighth of an inch. And I'm just going to trim it on one side and then down on the other side. Now, if you want to really speed up this process, you can push the ruler clear over to one side. There's nothing left to trim on that side, and you just trim about a quarter of an inch on the opposite side. Okay, so just trim off those tips, cut off your tips, and you have all four here. I'm just going to take these two and press them open. Now, usually always press to the dark, unless it lays better another way. But this time it's perfect. At, with dark on the top, set the seam open and press it. And all four are going to be done exactly like this. Okay, four and a half inches. Let's check it out. Just find out. Just take this, get rid of it. Now take the square up ruler. Make sure your calculations are good. Take the diagonal line on the square up ruler. Just line it up like that, right on the stitches. Check it out. It's perfect. I'm going to finish these up and show you how to do the quarter square triangles. Now I'm going to show you how to do the quarter triangle square. Let's just check it out. Now, in the block, there is only one background fabric and one medium, and across from each other, two dark. So that's what I laid out in five and a half inch squares. One background, one medium, and two dark, all five and a half inches square. And then in the very center, there's only two different fabrics, the background and the red. So got a five and a half inch background and a five and a half inch red. Now this is similar to the first technique I showed you with the half square triangles. Let's just flip the background right sides together, the medium right sides together to the dark and put these two together as well. Now watch how fast I am. I am on a roll. Draw a diagonal line right down through the middle and stitch a quarter of an inch from the line on both sides. And then you just keep on repeating. This is simple. No wonder it goes so fast. Now, once you have all of the diagonal lines drawn and sewn, then just take your ruler and cut each piece in half. Let's see. And at this point, 
on the half square triangles, I actually squared these up. But at this point, we're just going to take them and press them and go on. Let me just grab one triangle here, one triangle here, and both of these to press towards the dark. So just drop it on your pressing mat, set that seam. Oh my gosh, I love steam, but maybe if you don't like steam, that's fine. You just need to really press it well. Um, and also, if you use steam, you might want to just let it set and cool off for a minute before you pick it up. On these dark and medium, you also want to press towards the dark. These four will show the next step. Let me just pick all of these up and get rid of them. We are on a roll. Okay, now, this one right here, we have the dark and the medium, dark and background. We just want to place these two right sides together so we have all three colors. And just wiggle, match that seam up, let's check it there. Perfect, that's what we want to have. So now that this is right sides together, take your ruler and your marker and draw another diagonal line. This is a lot to remember. Hopefully you're taking some notes. Okay, right down along there. That one's ready and now let's just take this one, put the red like this, one like this, flip it right sides together, wiggle it good. Check and feel. Whenever the seam is flat, then you know that those seams are locked together. And draw another diagonal line. When I use my square up ruler, I actually like to line that 45 up against that left edge so that I know I have it straight. But you know, these patches are oversized, so it doesn't even matter if they're not exactly perfect. It helps, but we're going to trim them up again. Okay, now. It's the quarter of an inch seam again. Just drop your presser foot on that line. And right here at the seam, there's a seam underneath and a seam on top. So nothing flips. Hold your stiletto on one side and your finger on the other, just so everything lays perfect. Because it's so much easier to square them up when everything is flat. Okay, we can do some assembly line sewing right behind. Keep that flat, hold that down so nothing flips. Now actually you would do exactly the same thing with the other pieces, but you know how I'm always in a hurry just to get it done to show you how to do it. Okay, turn it around and then on the second side, feel, lock, make sure, and then stitch a quarter of an inch from the second side. I find that um, pins usually tweak my work just a bit. And I do better just with feeling and locking, and then it works good. And placing your tongue just right really helps. Let's keep that down, too. Okay, that is it. Let's see what we have. Now, just take this patch and cut it in half on the diagonal. You're going to have four of these. You need four of these in half. Let's just take it, get that six and a half inch triangle square up ruler. This is the handiest ruler. And once again, look for the four and a half inch line. And now this time we're going to use the diagonal line as well. Just drop that um, dashed four and a half inch line on the stitches and the diagonal line going right up through the center. Perfect. We've got about a quarter of an inch to trim on both sides. Take this, get rid of it, and just cut in on the tips. Trim them off, get rid of them, and check and see. That's exactly what we want. That's the one. The second one is the center that we have right here. Cut it in half right down through the middle again. Um, but this time we're going to do a special technique in the center. We only need one of these, so I'm going to take the right one and get rid of it. Okay, so on this one, the one that was on the left, square it up to four and a half inches. Once again, quarter of an inch line on the stitches and just trim away. Cut off here. And so that the seams all swirl on the back side, I'm just going to take this block and lay it flat. 
At this seam, I'm going to press it down to the right. This one is already going down. This one I'm going to press to the left, and this one goes up. And whenever you do that, you can just get right in here and pull these stitches apart, and you open them up. Okay, there you go. Just mush it. Mush it right in there, and press it, and you can see the little four patch. And when you swirl these seams, then they automatically lock with each other. Perfect. So let's just press them open. This uh, one, drop on your pressing mat with the medium and the dark. Press towards the medium and the dark. And this one, just press as it was. Press it flat. Get that little four patch there. Perfect. Now let's see how they all lay out. They're perfect. Okay, I have a stack that's all set with all the patches. So I'm just going to take the center that's squared to four and a half. Here's the one with the three fabrics in it, top and bottom. This piece right here, right here. And then we have the four corners. One, two, three, and four. Ta-da! It is perfect. Now when you sew them together, you can look at the back side and see how the seams all swirl right around the center. Every single one locks together. In the silent star, your seams will just all line up perfectly. The comfort quilt is quite easy to do with just squares and rectangles. No fancy rulers to learn. Well, the pattern was designed in 1940 for the Kansas City Star by Mrs. Davis Littner from Iowa. Now, she used her colors of purple and gold. Now, it sounds like my high school colors, but we're using patriotic. Well, we're going to start right here with a one and a half inch square, and then these rectangles around it are also one and a half inches wide by three and a fourth inches long. I am going to fly on this. If this is three and a fourth inches, then these have to be three and a fourth inch squares. Okay, I'm going to just start right in the middle and flip the middle vertical row to the left and just zip right down here. Let's see how fast I can zip. You know, this is a perfect pattern to use with your quilt group. You can just have everybody come with their patriotic scraps, sit down, cut a block, make it, give it to a hero in your life. And there's also a lot of groups that are making um, charity quilts to give away to um, people in the service right now or people that have already come out of the service or wounded soldiers. There's so many different ways you can make it. All right, so the first vertical row. Just gonna pull it down, open it up, and flip the last vertical row right sides together to the middle vertical row. The way I'm sewing this is to avoid pins. Oh my gosh, it's just like chaining it all together, lining it up so you get perfect matches. Now I'm just going to line up this center square and just sew right across one more. And the three and a fourth inch square is the last one in this vertical row. If they don't line up, oh my gosh, you know there's something wrong with that quarter of an inch seam. Now this is the whole center part all hung together, just like pins connecting those seams. Now, so they line up when I flip this row right sides together, I'm going to press seams in towards the rectangle. The rectangle here on this side and the rectangles here on this side. So everything is locked and lined up. Just get that all squeezed together and go right across the other way. I heard about some uh, Russian refugees who received some quilts from the Mennonite, Mennonites. Now, in Russia, they weren't really familiar with what quilts were. They slept with blankets. So, as the story goes, the, Russian, uh, the Russians had all burned their mattresses because they were infested. They couldn't use them anymore. So, they went to the Mennonites and said, 
couldn't we have some mattresses? See, perfect, told you. Couldn't we have some mattresses? And they said, we don't have any mattresses, but we have quilts. We would be glad to send you quilts. Well, not knowing what quilts were really like, they thought they could sleep on them. So the quilts arrived, oh my gosh. They put them on the floor, one thin little quilt on the floor. And the poor old people, <laughs> they got cold. They just couldn't, they couldn't keep warm on it. So they wrote back again and said, we need mattresses. That's the whole center right now. So perfect matches. At this point, now all you have to do is just press all of the seams in towards the rectangles. It's always press towards the rectangles. I'm just going to go right down through the middle here and line that all up. And now the only important thing about this is that it should be seven inches. You want it seven inches so that it fits with the next rectangles. Oh, looking good. Seven inches. And if you need to, you can just kind of tweak it down a little bit, stretch it out. But you want it seven inches so that now this is a three and a fourth inch square and this is a three and a fourth inch by seven inch rectangle. And it's just sewn exactly the same way. Just slip it together, so those vertical rows, and then press from the wrong side. Press all those seams out. Well, anyhow, those poor Russian refugees had those uh, blankets, those quilts. They were cold, and so the men and I said, okay, we'll send you lots of quilts. You can stuff them in mattress covers, make them as high as you want, sleep in them and then you'll be warm as could be. And that's exactly what they did. Well, these quilts are so cool, they've been called into active duty. Since so many of you make quilts for wounded soldiers, I have a new pattern for you called Tossed Nine Patch. It's just so much fun to do. Now, I know it doesn't look like a nine patch. You'll be amazed how you get to this point. First of all, you need to have some scraps. I bet you have lots of scraps. Cut 72 of them into five inch squares. You also need to have one background. You only need to have nine of those. Those are also five inch squares. Well, it's a lot of fun to cut scraps, but you know what? I'm going right for the charm packs. The charm packs are all color coordinated, all pre-cut and ready to sew. First of all, lay out a nine patch and put your five inch background square right in the center. Just make sure you don't put the same pieces beside each other. Mix up your colors. I know even the beginners in your group can do this. Well, let me just pick this up because I'm on a roll and I have one already sewn together. And this is what it looks like from the back side. This last seams are pressed away from the center. Well, if you have two fabrics alike, don't put them in the same position in your nine patch. For instance, this red in this nine patch is in the corner. In the second one, that same red is in the side. So I'll show you what happens when you get busy with your rotary cutter and ruler. Okay, I'm going to find the two and a fourth inch line on my ruler and line up the two and a fourth inch line right on that seam. Just hold that down, just cut right up. Now, I have it on a turnable and I'm not even going to pick a thing up, but just swing that turnable around and put the two and a fourth inch line back down again and cut. One more time, and da-da, like magic, I have a whole new patch. Okay, now this time, those are long pieces right there, long red pieces. Let's hold on to that one, and I'll show you whenever you cut this one. The next time that you're going to have one big square. Okay, two and a fourth inches. Actually, if you're working with a lot of people, you might want to put a piece of tape right on the two and a fourth inch line so nobody gets confused and these all work out to be the same. There, now it looks completely different. Once you have all of your patches cut up. Do a lot of them because you don't want to have the same pieces. You want variety. Then take them and always place your background 
facing in towards the middle. Let's go like that on the first two and then take two more and turn your background out. So this is the new block that you create in an instant. So now you just have to sew those back together and then there's a really special technique to make the blocks lay flat so that you don't, so you have every single seam locking together. Right here where you've gone back across the other way, you just want to snip that thread and then just unsew those stitches. Just put your stiletto or your seam ripper in there Pull out the stitches on that side, turn it around, pull out the stitches on that opposite side, and then when you lay your block flat, you can swirl those seams right around the center and this middle pops, pops open and there's a cute little four patch right in the middle. So when you take all of these blocks and sew them back together, every seam locks. It's just so much fun. Well, may you find peace while you peace.